Hello, and what we're going to do today is talk about the tools of biology. Actually, I mean, this is maybe more like tools of science. Um, we're going to start with uh, each of the tools. We're going to name the piece of equipment. We're also going to try to figure out what type of measurement, maybe in terms of uh, how accurate it's working as well. We're going to find out we have quite a few things here that are going to measure the volume of the liquid. And we're going to start with this one right here. This is what's called a graduated cylinder. And that is a cool, there it's a little better. Graduated. Um, what does graduated means? mean? It actually has all these marks. It's graduated into a certain unit of volume. And this is a cylinder because that's exactly what it is. Okay, what does it measure? It measures volume of liquids. Okay, and now liquids, most of the time kids think it's water, could be milk, could be soda, could be vegetable oil, could be alcohol, could be uh, strawberry jam, could be peanut butter, could be all kind of liquid. Some of those are much more easily available than others. Okay, so the next thing is, if we actually take a look at some things, graduated cylinders actually have this weird shape to them, at least the terms of the liquid that goes in, especially water. This is called a meniscus. Meniscus. And meniscus is actually caused by the fact that water likes water and water likes other things. There's a thing we call adhesion of water, which actually says a water molecule, which I call a Mickey Mouse molecule. It looks something like this, about 105 degree split rather than 180 split. Looks like Mickey Mouse, which actually gives a negative end and a po excuse me a negative end and a positive end, and that actually gives a polarity, dipolarity, so that water molecules actually stick together. If you've ever done a belly flop, the fact that these water molecules, which you guys can imagine as actually sitting right here together, they're actually, when you jump in the water, you ask very politely, can you please come into the pool? And the water molecule for a split second says, nope, can't. So you stop. And that's what gives you the belly flop. Um, then it finally lets you in because it can't hold you up. Water molecules actually tend to jump up on their container and they'll actually slide back down until they actually hit support that actually holds them up. But that gives it this meniscus type of shape. And water does this. If this was alcohol, we wouldn't get a meniscus. If this was milk, it probably would because it's mostly water. But if you take a look at it, we actually get this nice little meniscus. When you want to read a meniscus, you don't look too high almost like the three little uh, Goldilocks and the three bears. You don't look, actually this is reading too low by looking high, this is reading too high by looking low. You want to actually be just right. Read the bottom of the meniscus from as straight ahead as you possibly can. This number right here looks like it would be 6.12345 uh, 6.2 milliliters. If you take a look at the big graduated cylinder, the big graduated cylinders actually, these are units of five. So each one of these is one, each that is a half, so that would be 34.5. So you could actually estimate here 34.5, and actually even in between, you could even say 5.4 milliliters. This one, can't read the numbers, there's 10, probably 20 and 30. Looks like these are ones, you can do sort of the same thing. So the volume of that water, 10, 20, 30, looks like it's at uh, about 30, maybe 31 milliliters. This one, uh, can I read any of those numbers? Can't read any of them. Uh, it looks like 50, 40, 30, 10, that's not it, that's maybe 60, 50, 40. So those are 10, each one of those single, you can do the same thing. So if the water was like right here, you could say that was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, let's say 4.2 milliliters. So, it actually gives you a pretty decent resolution, pretty decent accuracy. Okay, the next tool we're going to look at, this is a ruler, or more importantly, this is a meter stick. And this is the entire meter stick down here. This is a highly magnified meter stick. 
This is uh, somewhere in the middle meter stick. I'm showing the two sides for the metric system, the SI system and the standard system, uh, English system for inches. We have inches up here and the metric system, SI system there. We have the SI metric system here. This number right here is actually 50, but 50 what? And if you look Way down here, this thing is actually says it's millimeters. That's talking about these individual lines. That line right there to that line right there, that is one millimeter of distance. So this is 50 centimeters. It's also equal to 500 meters. Okay, so we read this, and what does this measure? This measures length. It can be the length of string, the length of a table, the length of address, the length of a dog, the length of anything you want to measure from one side to the other. The next tool, I don't know why I'm trying to move the mouse when I can just use this. Next tool, this thing is called a pipette. And I have to assume that a pipette actually deals with uh, small pipes. But this is a pipette. This once again does liquid volume. And this one is very, very accurate. So it's very accurate, actually down to a drop. Now I'm not sure how much of a millimeter a drop is. If you actually look at these pipettes, they come graduated too. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. This whole unit right there is probably as much as it can actually hold, which is probably from there up. This is a milliliter, there's two, there's three, there's four milliliters. This one actually is probably still one, but it only holds one, two, three. This one is the same as that one. This one probably is a one millimeter, probably one millimeter, maybe two millimeter pipettes. These guys are for very small volumes. If you want a graduated cylinder, you could probably come out with 326.2, maybe 3. And if you actually want to get 326.23829, you want to use the pipette in terms of milliliters. Very, very, very accurate. Okay, the next one. This is a thermometer. Therm. Which means heat. O meter. Thermometer. Thermometer measures heat. Which is the amount of motion um, given to an object by a temperature increase. Excuse me, an energy increase. And that actually works out to temperature which is actually a measure of how fast the things are moving. Heat is the motion, is the energy that gives motion. Temperature is how fast it moves. In this one particular, actually, you can see is degrees Celsius. I grew up calling it centigrade. Um, they actually named it after, I think, the person who came up with it, which was Lord Celsius, like Lord Fahrenheit, who does our system. That number right there. 100 degrees Celsius. This is where you can get water to boil. I use the up arrow to show it goes to a different energy level moving up. The zero right here, this is where water freezes. I'm going to use a down arrow. And everywhere in between is water, liquid. Okay, now there's sublimation where solid water. Um, which would be down here, actually turns into water vapor and goes away. There's evaporation where water, depending on any temperature above freezing, is actually going to go to a higher level. And then water boiling, you get much more of it coming out so fast that the bubbles, the water actually turns into vapor inside the, the mass of the water. And you can see it as bubbles being less dense, bubbling up and splatting around. Celsius and Kelvin are pretty much the same. Zero Kelvin, no degrees absolute zero. You rise up to 273k and you've gotten up to the zero Celsius. You go up to 100, that's actually 373k and that's where water boils. So there's the 100 degrees Celsius freezing to boiling liquid water, boiling of uh, water vapor and uh, solid water all the way down to absolute zero. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about, um, these are actually two things. Both of these are going to deal with the liquid of water. 
liquid of water. This one up here is called an Erlenmeyer flask. This one over here is called a beaker. And both of these deal with liquid of water. But if you take a look at the unit, um, they don't really have the graduation that a graduated cylinder has. So this is for much larger volumes. I'm going to call it gross accuracy. And gross accuracy basically means these are not real accurate. If you take a look at there, that looks like that's just about 350 milliliters, which it says right there. Um, this is going to be plus or minus probably 10. Um, that one looks like it's 600, or excuse me, 700. Again, plus or minus a few. This one down here looks like it's about 20, plus or minus a few. Um, this one you'd have a tough time finding 323. You couldn't do it. You could find 300 plus. Um, that's just about 100. These over here, if you take a look, that looks like it's about 50. It looks like it's about 100. I can't read the yellow. This one looks like they're trying to approach, there's 450, somewhere around 490-ish. But again, it's a gross value. It's not, it's not very accurate. If you want to find accuracy, you've got to use a graduated cylinder. These are forceps. Forceps are actually used in biology for dissection. Does a really good job of holding material. Does a really good job of moving. You can push things around with them. This one is probably much more articulate for more precise holding, moving. And then you can also use it for separating. And uh, when I actually get to this point, I, um, I, I do something the kids actually like. I talk about the connective tissue between your skin and your muscle. If you pull the skin on the back of your hand, and when your hand is open, you can actually pull the skin up. And if you let it go, it should snap back. The younger you are, the more it snaps back. And I can see a difference from when I started teaching 28 years ago from where it is now. But they, and then I ask them to think about their grandparents and if they've ever done that. And most of the kids have actually seen it done on their grandparents' hand where you actually pull it up and you let go and it stays, the connective tissue breaks down. It's almost, you know, I, and I tell them what would happen if your skin wasn't attached to the muscles and it would be like walking around in a bag. Um, this bag would uh, move with you because it's attached, but basically it would sag down where it actually sags away from your muscle tissue. Okay, this is a micro, which means small. Scope, which means you can see. So this is a seer of small things. It has objective lenses, it has an ocular lens, it has other things we'll find when we actually get to microscopes when we start talk about cells. And this objective lens has probably like 10x on the small one, the red one. The ocular up here has 10x also, so if you're looking through the slide at this particular point, you get 10 times 10, magnify it by 100. This one over here is probably a 40x. If you spin it around, refocus it, you're probably looking at 400x. This one is 100, usually called an oil immersion lens, where you actually put, put a drop of water to actually get the ocular, the, the actual optics of the microscope to work. That would give you a thousand times magnification. So what's the purpose? Magnification. Um, for that, you usually use a slide, usually made out of glass. Uh, slides, and then again, going back to that property water, you put a drop of water with samples in it, and that water is going to look like this, which acts like a lens, and the light coming through different places, or actually going through this one in different places, can actually mess up your lens. So what you do is you use these cover slips, and you put the drop of water on, you take the cover slip like this, and what you end up having is a slide with a piece of water and a cover slip on top and the optics work much better through all of that so you can see it and we'll talk more about this when we get into cells 
I'm going to have my kids do two lab practicals. One of the groups is going to get this, where they have to measure length of string, they got to measure volume of water, they got to matter, measure mass, they're going to use the triple beam balance. They have to look at the temperature, raise their hand, get their initials when they get that. The other group's going to get this one, same type of thing except different numbers. I'm probably going to come up with a C group as well. Then we're going to talk about these where we actually change numbers. Normally what I do is I give them a number over here and let's just say three and they get to pick meters, liters, or grams. Let's actually pick grams right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to change it into deca, heca, and kilo and then deci, centi, and milli. But how the heck do you do it? These numbers are larger. So this is the large end. This is the small end. What do you do when you take a small number and you turn it into a large number? Or what do you do when you get a large number and you turn it into a small number? Um, what I have them try to do is to think about dollars and cents. So let's give them 75 cents. How many dollars is it? Well, it's point seven five of a dollar. You went from a small one to a large one, the number gets smaller. So when I go from a small one right here going this direction, so there's the up arrow, this number is going to get smaller. And when I go this direction, the number gets bigger. And then how do you do that? The neat thing about the metric system is you don't play around with the number. That three is going to stay. Like there's going to be a three. Where is my icon? There's going to be a 3 in this answer. There's going to be a 3 in that answer. There's going to be a 3 in that answer. There's going to be a 3 in this one, a 3 in this one, a 3 in this one. You don't subtract anything. You don't add anything. You don't multiply by weird numbers. You do everything by powers of 10. So when I actually move this direction to a smaller number, what do I want to do is I want to move the decimal point. And you move the decimal point for a smaller number this direction, which is you move the decimal to the left. And on this side, you move it to larger numbers, you move it to the right. So if this was 3 grams, how many decagrams is it? Actually, I, yeah, I can do it there. It's going to be, I move the decimal this direction to the left one place, because I moved one place. It's going to be 0 0.03. How many hecagrams? Is it going to be? You've got to move the decimal place over twice. So there's the decimal place. You have to put a zero, so it's 0 0.03. This one you'd have to move it over three times. So it's 0 0.003 kilograms. This one down here, move the decimal point to the right one place. So it's going to be 30 decigrams. Um, move it over two places. This one is going to be 300 centigrams and then we would end up with 3,000 milligrams and I'm gonna have them work with these numbers to try to figure out those as well okay that's it I appreciate you stopping by thank you much bye